Adding a match to a year-end campaign has been a game changer for me, and it will be for you as well. Stay tuned for a step-by-step -step plan to implement this amazing strategy. If you watched my video last year addressing successful year-end giving strategies, you know that I mentioned that adding a matching gift opportunity was a game changer. If you haven't yet watched that video, please click the link above to watch how a match fits into an overall plan for a year-end appeal campaign. I've only been incorporating a matching gift into my fundraising strategy since 2005, but it has had one of the greatest impacts of any strategy I've ever incorporated. I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step plan to incorporate a matching gift into your year-end campaign and literally double your giving from your past efforts. Let's get started. There's a five-step process to success at year-end. Step number one, determine your year-end project or program and funding goals. Too often, nonprofit leaders go into year-end campaign not really knowing what they hope to raise financially or what they're raising the money for. They just know that everyone says that fundraising at year-end is important, so they make an attempt to do so. Current and prospective donors have a strong desire to give to something specific and something that will make a big difference in the lives of one or more individuals. This is assuming they already are aligned with your mission, vision, and values. Find a priority project or program that's already making a big difference or will make a big difference. Make sure there's a clear plan for implementing the project or program that includes how specifically the funds will be used, if possible, how they'll be used at different funding levels. For example, a gift of $600 or $50 per month will enable you to accomplish XYZ and make sure what will be achieved will be measurable such as $600 will provide five meals for six homeless individuals during the holidays. A clear plan means that it's easy to understand and communicate in writing and verbally, as I recommend sending a letter and following up with a phone call or a visit. Clear and easy to understand also means that everyone in the organization, from the president, executive director, or board member, to receptionist can explain the opportunity within seconds. Too many organizations seemingly require that their staff are rocket scientists to communicate the strategy. Step number two, find your pace setting commitments. Once you've determined your overall goal, and hopefully it's a stretch goal because you'll need that when challenging pace setters, you can begin going to your top donors to get the pace setting commitment. A pace setting commitment is one that helps achieve a portion of the total goal for the campaign. For example, if your campaign is to raise $200,000 at year end and you want to raise half of that or $100,000 pace setting commitments, you can use that amount when challenging your pace setting individuals. Mr. and Mrs. Jones, we're trying to raise 100000 in commitments before year-end. What portion of that can you commit to today? Or can you give 25000 towards our 100000 goal? I intentionally use the term commitment instead of a gift because most fundraising regulatory agencies today won't count a pace-setting commitment a part of the match if a gift is given before a majority of the campaign is completed. Let me express that in a different way because it's very important. If someone agrees to make a pace setting commitment that you can use in your letters, phone calls, or visits to stimulate others to give, that actual gift itself cannot be received until the overall campaign is completed or most of the money is received. Pace setting commitments usually come from those most familiar with the organization, most aligned with your mission, and have already given at that level a significant enough level to make a dent in your fundraising goals. For example, a gift of $25,000 will make a significant impact in reaching the $100,000 pace setting goal mentioned earlier. As few as four commitments of $25,000 will help you reach your $100,000 goal, but a gift of $100 won't even begin to chip away at that goal. So choose wisely who you challenge. And if you would run into someone who would give more than you ask or expect, don't be afraid to increase your overall goal. If the first person you talk with wants to give 100% of the $100,000, then don't stop with that person. Increase the goal that you want to do up front, $100,000, $200,000. There's a likelihood that you will need that for your project overall anyway. Once again, start with your critical few donors, those 20% who give 80% of your income to your organization. Work your way through your list until you reach your pace-setting goal. 
Presenting the pay setting commitment option to partners can be done over the phone, via Zoom, or in person. Each donor is different and your relationship with them and their desire for personal contact should be the determining factors. Step number three, use the pay setting commitment to stimulate others to give. It's a proven fact that individuals or couples like to give and give more if they know their money is being matched from other sources. That's why when you're asking your pay setters, let them know that you intend to use their commitment to stimulate others to give more. That actually will really excite them. Let them know what I've just told you here, that most people love to give and love to give a stretch gift if they know their money will be doubled. Assure the pay setter that their commitment will remain anonymous and that they can give their pay setting gift anytime within a set period of time. For example, anytime before the end of the year, anytime within the next six months or 12 months. Giving people more time to fulfill their commitment generally leads and yields a larger gift than if you ask for it very soon. One important lesson that I learned is that matching every gift starting with a particular amount will stimulate even more money. The biggest mistake that most organizations make is that they offer to match a gift of any amount. Now this sounds like it's really good and it is better than no match at all, but stating that your pay setters will match every gift of 600 or more or 1200 or more will yield you those stretching gifts that you desperately need. Although getting a gift of $100 to be doubled is important to your organization, the greater impact will be made if a gift of $5,000, $10,000, or $25,000 or more is doubled. Giving donors a bar to reach for, a minimum gift, will lift many to levels that may, they may not have considered and will help you overall. Let your pay setters know that you'll be using a minimum gift opportunity and that's used instead of matching every gift. Most, if not all, will understand the rationale immediately. Step number four. Write or email all donors and follow up with a phone call or visit to certain donors. For all those who are not on the pay setting commitment challenge list, they should get a year end appeal letter sent the Friday before Thanksgiving outlining the priority project or program that will be the focus of the remainder of the year or focus of the new year. Include a story of a changed life that was changed by your organization. Be sure to highlight specifics and the person in the situation that led to the change. Connect that story to your current opportunity and how a similar life will be changed as a result of your gift. Then share the ways people can give and how their gift before December 31st is so necessary. Use the end of the tax year as a convenient deadline to give. Without a deadline, people might put, it, put off the gift and not sense an urgency to give. Segment your list so you aren't calling or visiting everyone at your end. That's just not necessary. Anyone who is given a gift of 999 or less just simply needs to get a letter. A phone call somewhere around 72 hours after the letter is sent is appropriate for those having give gifts between 1000 and 499 Anyone has given a prior year single gift of 5000 or more that was not challenged already to make a pay setting commitment can be challenged to give in person. The letter should mention the opportunity to have their gift matched by a handful of faithful friends of the organization. As stated earlier, include in the letter two key elements, that any gift over X dollars will be matched up to that pay setting goal. That we've used the example of 100,000 in this video. For those individuals receiving phone calls or visits, reiterate or remind that person about the match. Ask if they received the letter. If they did, ask them about their thoughts and if they had questions. Determine how much they're able to give. Don't ask if they can give. Ask how much are you able to give. Assume that they can give and work from there. If they didn't remember receiving the letter, explain the contents. Get their thoughts and questions and ask how much they're able to give. Before I share the most important step, if this video has been helpful or informative, give it a thumbs up below and let me know if you've ever used a matching gift to stimulate giving from others in the comment section below. If you haven't yet subscribed, 70% of our viewers have not yet joined our growing community. Please just hit the subscribe button and be sure to click the bell to be notified of the next helpful video. Step number five. Secure gifts from those making pay setting commitments. It's important that once the campaign is ended or nearly ended, you update the pay setter on the status of the match and secure the actual gift from the donor. If the person committed to give immediately after the campaign ends, get to those people soon. 
For a year-end campaign, this is usually soon after the new year. If they desire to have their gift given in the prior tax year, you can get that gift on December 31 or have them send the gift with a postmark that is before January 1. That way, you can cast their check after January 1 and they can still get credit from the prior tax year. If they committed to giving within 6 or 12 months, then keep a tickler file and remind yourself when to talk with them about fulfilling their commitment if they don't do so at that time. Be sure to thank everyone for their gift within 24 hours. It shows appreciation and respect for their sacrifice. As I stated in the beginning, you'll literally double your giving at year end with a match and I hope this will be a game changer for your fundraising efforts at year end and all other times of the year. Test the matching strategy at your events or at other times that you need that little extra push. But remember, using anything too often is never a good thing. I wouldn't do a match more than twice a year and once at an event. Let me know in the comments section of this video or at developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com how this worked out for you. As always, I wish you the best as you strive to increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thank you.